have a sustained and incremental investment, both national and international, then our benefit will be greater in the future. The most recent scorecard has revealed that the goal of 15% is currently met by Swaziland, Malawi, Gambia, and Ethiopia, closely followed by Central African Republic, Djibouti, South Africa, and Tunisia, all of whom are in the region of 14%. Such monitoring tools enable all working within the health sector to track efficacy, current spend, gaps in investment, and the nations that need our assistance. As well as issuing challenges to this parliament, as the champions, we seek to commend it for the draft plan of action in response to the declarations and commitments made to move the AIDS response and health sector forward. The plan identifies four action areas for the Pan-African Parliament and all African parliamentarians. First, leadership, advocacy, and accountability. Second, health financing and sustainability. And third, access to medicine and commodities security and universal health coverage. And fourthly, prevention and judicial as well as social justice. It was developed with a purpose to firstly guide the Pan-African Parliament, regional parliamentary bodies and national parliaments to undertake concrete action by enacting protective laws for people living with HIV, key populations and vulnerable groups. Secondly, advocate among their peers on the continent to take concrete action in achieving the UN AIDS task fast track targets by 2020 with a view to end AIDS by 2030 as a public health threat. And thirdly, develop mechanisms for effective oversight and accountability of African governments and recommend methods of engagement between the executive and legislative branches of government and between parliaments and civil society on the AIDS response. And lastly, mobilize national resources by front-loading investments, particularly in the health sector and through innovative mechanisms, including national health insurance, tax, and fiscal space. It should be noted that two goals are scheduled to be achieved by the end of 2018. The first is the achievement of legal reform that includes the removal of punitive laws in line with UN AIDS fast track targets. And the second is the establishment of an interparliamentary forum on health and HIV or other mechanisms to monitor implementation and performance of governments towards delivery of their national and international obligations, including international human rights instruments, universal periodic review, as well as the Maputo Protocol. We must remember that discriminatory laws tend to deny access to health services treatment and prevention of health threats, particularly for vulnerable groups, key populations, adolescent girls, poor citizens, young women, and people living with disabilities. Aligned with these legislative measures, the draft resolution further calls national parliaments and the Pan-African Parliament to ratify and where necessary, domesticate international treaties and conventions, as well as the relevant optional protocols 
the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the Maputo Protocol, and to commit to the Global Strategy for Women and Children's Health, It makes further calls to parliaments and governments across the continent to seek guidance and domesticate the legal norms enshrined in model laws developed through consultative processes at the regional level. In terms of initiating internal processes of monitoring and evaluation, the resolution calls for the establishment of an inter-parliamentary forum to monitor progress and support the domestication and implementation of international, regional, and national human rights instruments. This, these include resolutions and decisions of the Commission on the Status of Women regarding women, the girl, child, and HIV, and to ensure that all health-related obligations and recommendations therein are fully implemented and respected by all levels of government. As we know, health is a central human right that is affected by numerous and interconnected forms of structural discrimination and injustice, therefore creating tools to supervise this is indispensable to the task of achieving our targets. As I conclude, I wish you open, candid, and productive deliberations on the draft resolution and program of action. I hope the outcome of this discourse will continue to move the continent forward in addressing its ever-pressing health threats and contributes to achieving our democratic goals, enhancing our attempts to address health and development. And therefore, on behalf of the champions, I affirm our commitment that we stand ready to march with you in all processes and therefore ensure that, assure you that our unwavering and practical support will always be available to you. As such, we keenly await the outcome of your dialogue and wish you every success in your deliberations. And I want to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Nancy. And now I want to give the floor to honorable member. The first in my list is honorable Aminata Nyang from Mauritania. Merci, uh, Monsieur le... uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the right to health is a fundamental right for which parliamentarians must become mobilized and commit themselves fully to it. As we all know, AIDS is a scourge that has ravaged our continent. It is high time that uh, our dear continent uh, uh, was uh, freed from this scourge. To do so, we need the mobilization of all, but uh, more specifically, the uh, mobilization of uh, parliamentarians. We, as parliamentarians, vote and, uh, and uh, legislate. We have uh, a crucial role to play in uh, implementing laws on uh, public health. We are 
those who are in direct contact with the populations, we can efficiently contribute to the sensitization of our populations in relation to public health. I am happy about the degree of collaboration between UN AIDS and the African Union. This uh, collaboration will undoubtedly enable us uh, to move uh, forward uh, in this area on uh, public health. The African Union, through uh, its uh, the health uh, committee, is uh, committed uh, to public health and the right uh, to health in Africa. We wish to further promote this collaboration and to further consolidate the capacity of uh, parliamentarians so that uh, they can play their role efficiently and so that they can efficiently contribute uh, to the implementation of uh, laws on public health in Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleague. I have a list of 35 MPs wishing to take the floor. 35 speakers. The second one is Honorable Regina Sparon from Seychelles. You have the floor. Esparon. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like, first of all, to thank the presenter for their very interesting presentation, which has surely kept us awake at this time of the day. As we, as we spearhead effort, for the world to understand HIV AIDS, how to treat it, and how to prevent it, we cannot have a two-speed approach to end AIDS unless we adopt a holistic approach to encompass everyone. It is imperative that we uphold and ensure the principles that we adhere their rights to health because it is not properly, because if not properly addressed, it will further marginalize the problem, which will escalate and risk that we would not attain the sustainable development goals or set target by 2030. Hence, let us be more cohesive in our approach. We need to synchronize our effort and let us earmark resources to tackle health issues. It is of paramount importance to have human and financial resources to tackle 